Hello, and welcome back to a new year with Typing Club. In this video, we're going to go over how to prepare your account for the new year. Here I can see a list of my active classes. Students enrolled in these classes can still log in and work on their assignments. But since these classes are from last year, let's take a look at what we can do to clean them up. So option one would be to delete the classes, but please note that deleting classes is a permanent action and we are not able to restore deleted classes. To delete the classes, you would select the classes you would like to delete and then click delete right up here. Student progress is tied to the student and to the course, not to the class. So when you delete a class from your Typing Club account, it just deletes the class, but the students in the class will remain in the account. And since student progress is tied to the student and to the course, but not to the class, when you add that student to a new class and assign the same course, their progress in that course will remain. Another option for cleaning up your classes is to archive the old classes. And this is a good option if you may need to reference or restore the classes at a later date. Archived classes will disappear from your main class list and students cannot work on assignments in archived classes. To archive your classes, you would select the classes you want to archive and then click more actions and then archive and then confirm. So on your main screen, by default, you can only see the active classes. To view your archived classes, you would click Filter, and then under Status, you can either select Show All or Archived. So I'm going to hit Show All and then Apply. And now I can see all of my classes, both active and archived. And now I'm going to go ahead and restore these classes. So I will select all of the classes and then click more actions and then restore. And now they're all back on my home screen. A third option for your classes is just to update the old classes. And this is a good option if you've customized a lot of the settings that you want to preserve. So to update the old classes, you would just click on a class and then click edit class. Here you could update the class name, class ID, description, school, or grade. And then you can disenroll the students in the class if you need to, if you would have new students in this class for this year. To do that, you would just select the students you want to disenroll and then hit disenroll right here. You're also able to clear the rosters for your classes in bulk. So to do that, you would click on classes on the left hand side, select the classes you want to clear the roster for, and then click more actions, clear roster, and then confirm clear roster. And this will remove the students from the classes, but it will not delete the students from the Typing Club account. The students would still be able to be found under the Students tab, and then you could enroll them in their new classes for this year. Next, if you have multiple schools in your account, you can review the school list and make sure all the information is correct. If you need to add any new schools, you can click Add School near the top right corner. Then you can enter the name, the optional school ID, and then the contact information for the school, and then click Add School. If you need to delete any of the schools, you can select the box next to the school's name and then click Delete. And then the same is true for instructors. You can delete and archive any instructors who are not returning and add any new instructors or update instructor roles and permissions for existing instructors. To add a new instructor, click Add Instructor near the top right corner, then enter their first and last name, email, optional instructor ID, choose which school they belong to, and you can also check if you would like us to email the teacher so they can set up their own password, then select their roles and permissions and click add instructor.
If you need to update the roles or permissions for an existing instructor, click on the instructor's name and then click Edit Instructor. Scroll down till you see Roles and Permissions and then you can update the roles and then click Update Instructor. And then finally, if you have any instructors that you would like to delete or archive, to delete them, you would select the box next to their name and click delete. If you'd like to archive them, you can select the box next to their name and then click more actions and then archive. And archived instructors will not be able to log into the account. Now we will take a look at students. You can use the headers for first name, last name, last activity or grade to help sort your students. So for example, if I click on the arrows next to first name, my students are now in alphabetical order. Or if I click the arrows next to last activity date, I can see the students with the least recent activity or the most recent activity. I can also click filters and here I can filter the students by school, class, grade, instructor, status, so I can either view students who are currently active, students who have been archived, or I can click show all and see both current and archived students. I can also check this box to show unenrolled students only, and these would be students who are not currently enrolled in a class. I can also filter by created date, last login date, or last activity date. So right now I want to filter by grade and I'm going to select all of my fourth grade students and then click apply. So here I see all of the fourth grade students in my account and I know that these fourth grade students will not be using the program again this year. So I want to either delete them or archive them. So to delete them, I would select all and then click delete. And then to archive them, I would select all and click more actions and then archive. And archive students will not be able to log into the account, but you could restore them at a later date if they ever return to Typing Club or if you ever wanted to view their data. Deleting students is a permanent action and we are not able to restore deleted students. So now that I have archived my fourth grade students, I'm left with all of my students who will be continuing on with Typing Club this year. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of the students and click More Actions and then click Move Up One Grade. And then you'll see that this grade over here just moved up one grade level. Now, if you did have any students with an unassigned grade level, it would stay unassigned. And this grade is really just a sorting or a filtering tool. It's not going to affect any of the classes that they've been assigned to or any of the courses that they've been assigned. Now that we've cleaned up the data from last year, we can go ahead and add the new data for this year. Let's start with classes. If you only have a few classes to add, you can add them individually by clicking Add Class near the top right corner. You can enter the class name, optional class ID, optional description, select the school that the class will belong to and select the grade. If the class has students in multiple grades, you could always select Trainee. Then select the instructor for the class, and then the first course that will be assigned to the class, and then click Add Class. You can add students to it now, or you can save that for later. Next, if you use Google Classroom or Clever Library, you can upload your classes and students from there. You would just click Google Classroom or Clever, whichever one you use, and then click Get Started. Select the class or classes that you want to import and then click close. And then you can see that the class was added. My class doesn't currently have any students in Google Classroom, but if it did, the students would be imported as well. Whenever you receive a new student in your Google Classroom, you would click back on Google Classroom, click get started, and then click resync. And the same goes if you wanna upload your classes from the Clever Library, you would just be clicking on Clever instead of on Google Classroom.
Another option for big accounts or district accounts is using the data import tool where you'll upload your classes using a CSV file, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Next, we'll move on to adding students. If you only have a few students to add, you can add them individually by going to add student near the top right corner and then clicking add one student. You'll need to add a first name. Last names are optional. Email addresses are also optional for students. Then a username. Passwords are also optional for students. If they don't have a password, they'll enter their username or email address and leave the password field blank when they log in. Student IDs are optional. And then select the school that the student will belong to and then select their grade. If they have any accessibility settings that need set, you can do so now. And then click add student. In order to log in and start typing, every student does need to be enrolled in a class. You can go ahead and enroll them now. Just select the class that they should be in and click enroll in class. Now, if you have multiple students to add, then you can click add student in the top right corner and then click import update students and then click the import update tool. Here you can upload a list of students using a CSV file. You can download a sample CSV file or check the documentation on how to prepare the data by using these two links. And then just upload your file, click next. And then here it will guess which headers it believes belongs with each column. If that's incorrect, then you can manually change it here. Or if you want it to skip any of these columns, you can select skip. And then you'll select the school that the students will belong to and then click finalize import and then here it'll give you a summary so it'll show you if each student was successful and then you can go ahead and enroll these students in a class another option would be to allow your students to add themselves to the account with a class code so for that you would just add the class click on the class and then click enable class code. And then you can either give this code to your students and direct them to go to your URL, or you can copy and paste this URL and send it to your students and they can sign up for your class there. Once all of your students have signed up for your class, you're gonna wanna disable this class code so that they don't create duplicate profiles for themselves. Now we will take a look at courses. Courses are divided into a few different sections. First are my courses. These are any custom courses that I have created. Next is managed by other teachers. These are custom courses that other teachers in the account have created. And then lastly are Ed Club courses. And these are the courses that we have created here at Ed Club. We now offer courses in both vocabulary and spelling and typing. So you could choose to filter by subject if you'd like. You can also filter by who the course is managed by. You can also filter by language. We do offer courses in a variety of different languages. So you can view all of those here and you can also filter by grade level. Brand new for this school year, we've also released vocabulary and spelling levels one and two, grade level typing for grade six, digital citizenship levels one through five, and SEL levels one through three. Through a variety of new experiences, digital citizenship covers both online citizenship skills, such as netiquette, communication, and safety, as well as digital literacy skills from understanding how computers work to practical software applications. SEL introduces students to important social skills such as self-awareness, self-management, and responsible decision-making. And then lastly, make sure to take a look at your course settings where you can set the default course either for the entire account or you can specify the default course per grade level. Lastly, if you are a very large account or a district account, I would recommend adding your new data using the data import tool. To get to this tool, you would click on tools and then view tool for data import tool. 
and here you can upload one CSV file of all of your schools, one CSV file for all of your instructors, one CSV file for all of your classes, and one for all of your students. You do need to make sure that you upload them in that order, so schools first, then instructors, then classes, then students. And that's just to make sure that your instructors get assigned to the correct schools, your classes get assigned to the correct instructors, and your students get assigned to the correct classes. The CSV files do need to be formatted in a very specific way, but you can click on this link here to see a PDF document for detailed information. You can also click on each of these links. So this link for school will show you all of the required fields. So for school, you can see you do need a school ID and a school name, but an address and an action are optional. You can also download a template. And then whenever you're ready, you can upload your files. Click process file and then scroll down and you'll see them under upload status. You'll see that it was processed. You can also view the details. So you can view all of the schools that were added and all of their information. Under processed, you see it was processed okay. If it wasn't processed okay, there would be a reason. And then if I go to my schools, I can see that the new school was added. We do also offer full integration with Clever and ClassLink for paid school accounts who have purchased 200 or more student licenses per year. If you're interested in that, you can just reach out to our support team. And then finally, if you have any questions, you can click on support on the left hand side. You can click here to get to our help center and you can search any questions here or view the user guide or information on class management, student management, reports, resources, FAQ. Or if you go back, you can also create a ticket to reach out to our support team and they'll get back to you shortly.